Hi guys, JP from FSI Panel. I hope you're well. On this video, we are going to see something very unusual on the Boeing 737. But something that you can do, this is called a battery start. So in our case today, we don't have the APU and we just landed in Pisa, as you can see. And they don't have a GPU. So the only thing they have for us today is uh, air conditioning that you can see it right there connected to the aircraft and they have as well a high pressure air starter so here we have an issue as we don't have any ac power for the aircraft so that's quite a problem for us so you can see here how we are connected we have the uh, air conditioning right there under the belly and we have the high pressure line right there so here the idea will be to start one engine with the battery only, and for that we have a checklist in the 737, so we'll try to do it. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, some technical aspect when you do that, especially regarding the ignitions. And then if we manage to start an engine, we will uh, complete a two engine start. And on the second part of that video, I'll use FSI panel to position the aircraft to fly on RNP runway 22 left here in Pisa. All right, so let's jump in the cockpit and see what we can do today. All right, here we are in the cockpit of our 737. And as you can see, everything is dark, of course. We don't want to drain the battery. That's the only source of power we have today to start our engine and to get out of um, Pisa. So we have everything basically off. We have the passengers on board. They use the sunlight, so that's okay. And they are getting fresh air from the air conditioning and we have the air starter unit connected. So at this time I have requested the uh, GPU, the, sorry, the air conditioning to be uh, removed from the aircraft. So we just keep the air starter unit. This is for the ground staff. They will have to remove only one hosel later on when we have one engine start. So basically now we are ready to start. We have received our clearance to start the engine and we are going to read carefully the checklist. So I'm not going to go all the way through the procedure here, we have checked all the documents and everything. So I will just go to the main element that you have to be very careful when you do this exercise. So first of all, what you have to make sure is that when you switch on your batteries, you are ready to start your engine. You don't want to lose 15 minutes with batteries on doing a briefing or briefing the passengers or, or losing time because the battery will drain very fast. So the idea here is to be ready, have the checklist with you, and when you start the process, just go ahead. As soon as you have one engine up and running, you can put the generator on the bus, and then that's it. You have done the job. Now your aircraft has a running engine and enough AC power for the old aircraft. So that's the main goal of the exercise. So let's go ahead and do it. So we have to uh, make sure that as soon as we go with the battery, we check a couple of items. So let me go ahead and do it. So I'll put the battery on. So here we go. When we do that, in our aircraft, we're gonna have a couple of instruments that are lighted. We have the uh, indication here for the uh, master warning, master cautions. We're gonna have the standby ISIS instrument. We're going to have the left FMC. We are going to have the left radio and the left navigation. And we have, of course, uh, not a lot of equipment. If, if you look at the uh, air conditioning panel, it's not working. The precision panel is not working. So it's not a very nice situation. One thing to keep in mind is that only the right igniters will be powered uh, when you do this kind of exercise because the standby AC bus that we are going to use today, so we are going to use the batteries, which are going to, uh, to go via inverters to power the standby AC bus. And the standby AC bus is giving AC, 150 volt AC only to the right igniters. So you will see that if you are on the left igniters, it will not start, your engine will never start. So you have to make sure you are on the right igniters, okay? That's in MEL, you cannot depart if your right igniter is not working because in case of loss of thrust on both engine, you won't be able to restart any engine, so that's why. All right, so I turn on my battery switch. I have to make sure that my electro electric hydraulic pumps are off. That's one thing to make sure. We're checking that the landing gear is down. That's good. Then we can check the fire quickly, the test. So here we're gonna have two lights and that's it. If I go on the right side, one, two, three, four, five, plus the two fire light. Let's see, I didn't see the last one. So that's seven light in total. Right down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven light. 
perfect. So this is working as well. Then we are going to check, of course, our mask. Captain and first officer will do that. And the idea here is to go fast and read the checklist. APU not available, so we'll continue with the uh, the rest. So we make sure that the um, emergency exit light is armed. We are going to make sure that our passenger sign now is on. This is the case already. Then hydraulic pump switch. These two must be on. So that's already the case. Air conditioning panel. So now this is something interesting here. The checklist will tell us that they have to be initially in auto, auto, and even a PU bleed on. In our case, we don't have a PU. So you can leave it as it is for now until we are ready to start the engine. The speed brake has to be down and detent. We can see that here. And basically we make sure that we have the parking brake, that we have the engine start lever to cut off, and then that we have all the papers on board and we are clear to start the engine. All right, so now we are going to start the engine. So what we need to make sure is call the ground staff, make sure everything is clear and request clearance to start engine number one. When we got this clearance, we are going to do the exact same procedure as with APU running. We switch off the packs. We make sure we have anti-collision lights on. There is no way or no reason to switch on the, the valves here for the fuel because as you can see, they are AC powered and we don't have any AC on the aircraft so far. So that will not help at all at this time. Then we have to make sure that we are on the right side with the igniters, otherwise nothing's going to happen. And we can do a normal engine start. So one thing you want to see here, if I show you the engine parameters, when you are on battery, you will get only N1 indication, N2 indication, and the all quantity. However, when you start the engine and you have a rotating N2, after I think 7% N2, if I'm not wrong, then we have permanent magnet alternator into both of the EEC and those will power their own EEC and you're going to have all information. So that's what you should get. No indication, just these three. And once the engine starts turning around 7% and 2, we should see the other indication, EGT or pressure or temperature. All right, so we are ready to start engine number one. So let's go start engine number one. We ask ground crew, they are cleared and we do a normal engine start, so ground. We make sure that we have rotating N2. That seems to work. Look at this, around seven, eight, okay. And we should soon get information right there. Let's see if that happened or not. Here it comes. You see, now we're getting the information. Waiting for 25% fuel. We are looking for fuel flow. Light up. Now we complete the engine start. The air is now coming from the ASU. And the electrical needed is coming only from our battery via the inverters through the standby AC bus. And the right igniters is doing the job now. Waiting for 56% and 2. And we're going to have the start valve cut out. So 56. And start our cut out. Now we wait for the red light to disappear and now we have an engine running. Now that the engine is running, the aircraft is not yet powered by the generator. The aircraft is still powered by the battery. So the next item we want to make sure we do it, we do quickly, is just to put the generator on the bus. When you do that, your aircraft is so happy because she gets all the power needed for all the instruments via one AC bus which is powering via the transfer bus the other side so basically we have an aircraft that is fully powered at this stage which is very nice the next thing you want to do without delay even though it's not a problem anymore because you are on the generator is to start aligning your irs that might take up to 10 minutes so it's good to go on nav and right away insert here the position so once you do that, you will pick up the GPS position and we are going to drop it right there. So that's the first thing you want to do so you don't lose too much time. Once this is done, we will be able to start engine number two. 
And after the engine number two is started, then we have to do the whole cockpit preparation. So at this stage, what you want to do is look at your overhead panel and you can start looking at what you can clear. You see all the lights that are on. So the yaw damper will not come on because the IRS are not yet aligned unless I'm on a faster line. Yes, I'm on a faster line, so that's why it came on. Then if you go down here, you'll switch the pumps on. Now it's good. You can continue here. The source, we will do it whenever we start engine number two. And then we continue here. All good. We'll switch the Windows Eat, Pro Beat. This is the electrical pumps. Now we can switch them on. So our, our brakes are, accumulators are getting powered again. Then we go down here. We have number one, which is started. We continue here and the passengers, they are maybe very hot now. So we are getting some air from here. So let's give some pack. So pack auto. So now my left bleed is coming to the left pack. And if I open the isolation valve and I turn on the right pack, then we are getting as well some air into the cabin. Mainly the left pack is for the cockpit and the forward cabin. Right pack is for the cabin uh, and the aft of the aircraft. Here we will set our cruising altitude and landing elevation. And for the lights, they are all set. Now, if we go back into here, we can start, we can finish that after the two engine start, which is better. So we are going to do a second engine start. But the second engine starts, the ground staff, they would appreciate if you could do it with a cross bleed. The checklist doesn't tell you anything about that. But imagine if they have two engines running, they would have to come from the front here to disconnect the hosel. Right now, you can ask them to come from that side where there is no risk, engine is off remove everything and get away. So this is what we will do. So I'll ask them to uh, disconnect now the air starter. So ground services and release the air starter. So now this is going to be disconnected from the aircraft. All right, off they go. Okay, ground, we are ready to start engine number two. And we are clear to start engine number two. We are going to cross bleed start. So we have to make sure again that the engine bleeder switch are on. That's important. Then we make sure that the EPU bleeder switch is off. We switch off again the packs. And isolation valve switch has to be on automatic. This is to allow the bleed from the left engine to go to the right engine. If it's on op open, it will work as well. If it's on close, obviously it's not going to work. Then we have to make sure that we have 30 PSI right there. So you can see now I'm about 20 something. So I need 30. So I will increase my thrust on engine number one. And as I'm increasing the thrust, I'm getting to 30%, uh, sorry, 30 PSI. Something like that. Now that we have the 30 PSI, we can start engine number two doing the normal procedure. So when you go ground on engine number two, you will see that maybe your PSI will drop. So do not add thrust. If it drops, it's because you are using the air now to turn the engine. So there is no need to add more thrust. We had 30 before. Now you can see that N2 is rotating. That's perfect. We are waiting for 25%. and fuel. Again, we are looking for fuel flow. Then we are looking for light up. We are looking for N1 acceleration. We are looking for N2 acceleration. All pressure 13 PSI or above, the, all the light is off. And we go for 56%. Now when you do that, if you have a drop of uh, air from the left engine, the EGT will raise a little bit faster. Then you have to add a little bit of thrust if you want to save the day. Now we can see that it looks quite nice. We are far away from the red line. And we have 56% start a cutout. We have a normal start. All right, so now I have a normal start. I will do exactly like a normal procedure. We have started both engine. So what you will do, generator on the bus. This one, sorry. Then probe it are on, and now we are going to set our panel 
exactly like you will do it on a normal after start. So we have the packs to auto, the isolation valve auto, right pack auto, bleed number one on, APU bleed off, and bleed number two on. Now we can go here and make sure we have the two engine start to continuous. And now we are going to put our RTO and we are going to put our takeoff flaps, flaps one. Great, so everything is done. We try the master caution, nothing. And as we have fuel in the center pump, we switch the light, the light sorry, the pumps on and we are all good. So basically now we have started the engines. Engines are running, we are safe. Only thing we have to take care now is make sure you have your flight plan ready and that can take five, 10 minutes, but now you have the engines running, everything is stable, you save the day, you know that you will be able to depart from Pisa without any issue. All right, so I hope that was good for you. And now we are going to go for the second exercise of this video. We'll try to fly this uh, RNP 22 left, AirNav 22 left in Pisa using FSI panel and see how the PMDG 737 flies it. So let's go ahead and start FSI panel and program that approach. All right, I just started FSI panel. We have the 737-800, PISA, runway 22 left. That's the one we want. And for the fix, let me think what we can do. So basically what we need to use is a star which uh, ends up over PISA VOR, which is the initial F approach fix for the uh, RNP 22 left. So I see here that the Beton 1 Sierra is in fact going there. So we'll select Beta 1 Sierra and then we will select Pisa. Now looking at the chart for the approach, we can see that we should be at 5,000 feet over Pisa VOR and uh, we will continue after Pisa on the track 113. So I will already put 113 here. So we are already in the right position and we are going to put 5,000 feet and five miles. So it means we're gonna be five miles uh, to the north west of Pisa VOR. That's good. Then we will insert a hold and we will prepare the approach and fly that approach. So validate, we are ready to go. I'll click move aircraft. The aircraft is overweight as I just loaded it. So I will ask for a new load and let's put a zero fuel weight of around 56 tons and four tons of fuel. That's good for us. Update the load and off we go to the simulator. We are ready to fly. So now we let FSI panel do the job and bring me in the air. So do not touch anything here is going up, going for 5,000 feet. We can see the airport in front of us right there. And we should be five miles away from uh, Pisa VOR. So here I will just let FSI panel complete his job. And after that, we will be able to fly this approach and see how she performs. All right, we're reaching 5,000 feet out quad, and we should be ready within the next 10 seconds, hopefully. Here we go. Let's see if FSI panel gives us the control. Yes, aircraft is ready, hold your brake to take control. Okay, good. So now that we have that, we are going to change a couple of things. First of all, the speed, there is no speed restriction on that approach. So let's see, we want to fly 230 knots for the time being. So I'll just increase my speed to 230 knots. That's the first thing I want to do. And then I'm going to insert the approach in the FMC. So we are going for the AirNav 22 left via PISA VOR. Execute. Now we want to go direct to PISA. Execute. And I will put the old over pizza. Well, we don't even need to put the hold as we could stay in position freeze until we are ready. So let's, let's keep it like this. So we have here pizza 5,000 or above. Then we go to Romeo Papa 701, 5,000 or above. 702, 5,000 or above. 703, that's going to be 3,300 or above. Finally, 704, 3,100. And then we're going to have 
the uh, threshold and we have a descent of 272. The chart strongly says three degrees, so that's quite strange. Let's see how she performs that, we'll see. And then we have the missed approach, which is correct. So everything is good. We are going for flap sturdy landing here and we are going to set the course. So for this approach, the course is 202. So let's set 202 on both sides. 202. 202. Auto break 2, that's fine for now. We don't need this. This is good. What else? Uh, VOR. So PISA 112.1. So we are going to set 112.1. On both sides, 112.1. Great, so now we should have the five miles that we programmed, that's fine. We have the course, now we are going to set up the FMC. So if you go to prog, prog sorry, page four, you can see that the actual RNP is 0 0.3 already. So we can, this is for the approach and the actual is uh, 100 so here we could change it and force it to 0 0.3 already if we want to that's fine and what we want to make sure as well in the position in it we want to go to the nav status page 3 nav status now you go to page 2 and you want to make sure that you are only flying with the gps so we don't want any station like dmes or vors to try to update our FMC if there is a wrong, maybe uh, an, or an outage or something wrong with a localizer, with a VOR or DME. So we just turn those off. We only keep the GPS as the source of navigation. Good, so now this is set. We need to make sure that if we go to the cruise page, we need to make sure that we have, enter we entered something here. Let me show you why. Right now, if you look in the progress page, you don't see any top of descent. So basically the aircraft, if I release it and I fly LNAV VNAV, it will go in VNAV ALT and you will never get a top of descent. So basically you will fail the approach for sure. So what you go, what, what you have to do, sorry, you go to cruise page and here you enter your altitude, 5,000. That's it. Now your aircraft knows that you are flying at 5,000 feet and she will be able to compute a top of descent. The speed, I think on the PMDG, there is a bug right there. If I try to enter 230, it's not working. But I found out that if you go, for example, long range cruise, and now you enter 230, that will work. So that's what I want to do to match the speed that I'm flying right now, execute. So remember, this is the cruise page. As soon as we start a descent at the top of descent that you can see right there, the aircraft will revert to those speed. So below 10,000, 240 knots. So I will say now just go 230 knots below 10,000. So now the aircraft will not accelerate. She will stay at 230 knots. So now if I go progress page, you can see that I have a top of descent and the 737, she wants to do a, a constant descent. So once she starts the descent, then she will continue all the way until the runway. So we are going to check that today, how she managed to do that. So we have done everything. In case of misapproach, it says to, uh, as soon as practical, turn right and join the radial 309, climbing to 2000, to the hold. So it's a good idea to put the fix. We are going to put PISA. We want the radial 309. So in case of missed approach, we turn right there, we go to Pisa, and we can see that Babnu is at 12 DME. So if I put a distance of 12 miles, then my two lines should cross, and that should be exactly as you can see now. Let's see it in plan page, it's probably easier. If I go in plan page and I show you that, you can see that in case of go around, we are in the right position, so that's fine. Good, so we are ready to fly this approach. We will see what happens. So when I release, when I take the control, I'm going to arm LNAV and I'm going to arm VNAV. What we want to see here is LNAV and we want to see VNAV path. So let's see if that happens. I hold the brake for three seconds. I have the control and I will go 
nav and now vnav as we have done the work properly we have vnav part fmc speed and the aircraft maintain the correct speed so we are all good now our aircraft is going and she's about to fly the whole thing the idea of this exercise is to see if we can let the fmc fly the entire approach without intervening without doing anything ourselves so we will let the aircraft slow down whenever it's time to slow down and the only thing we will do is set the flaps and lower the gear and do the landing for the rest we will let pmdg 737 do the job and see if she's able to to do the whole thing by herself so we are passing pisa vor there is no speed limitation there is just the altitude restrictions of 5000 or above so that's fine as you can see she's maintaining the altitude she doesn't cry for descent right now if i would set a lower altitude she's not supposed to descend but by good practice we will not set a lower altitude unless we are in a segment where we can start to descend this is to avoid distraction or sometimes you press a wrong button level change or anything else and then the aircraft goes below the altitude so as we have 5000 or above in the next waypoint there is no real reason to lower the altitude. If you will do it, let me show you that, then the aircraft will not descend. But a good habit is to keep it to the actual altitude so you don't give the clearance to the aircraft to descend. All right, after the RP701, we are going to turn left and fly to the RP702 again here. There is no speed restrictions and there is just the altitude restriction 5000 or above. So we have a very nice view here. Turning left now. We are going outbound. So we just follow now with the heading bug. So that's the thing with the 737. You always have to follow with your heading. So what we see here on our map display, we can see top of descent. So at that stage, this is where she wants to retard the truss. So we expect to see retard. As we set the speed to 230 during descent, the speed should remain at 230 knots. So we expect to see retard. Aircraft start to descend. And at the diesel point, she will start to reduce the speed toward up. And this is where she wants us to give some flaps. So basically, when you are at the descent point, you have to configure the aircraft all the way to the landing configuration. One thing you want to do as well is that the uh, final approach fix, in our case, the RP704, when you start the descent, what you could do in a fixed page, which is as well something we like to do, is to put this waypoint, RP704, and we just put two miles radius. This is to remind you that you need a full configuration and you need to have the minimum descent altitude in the MCP, otherwise she will not descend. So our minimum descent altitude, by the way, we forgot to do it. This is 440. So I'm just going to set it now. Here we go, 440. All right, so top of descent. So now we get a message, reset MCP altitude. So she's reminding us that now she needs a lower altitude. If I don't do anything now, passing the top of descent, I'm going to revert to VNAV altitude, and then we're going to have to mitigate, use vertical speed to descend and catch up the ideal profile. So make sure that you give clearance to your aircraft to descend. So the next altitude is 3,300, so I'm going to set 3,300. Then she is happy. And as we said, top of descent, we're expecting to see retard. The thrust will retard all the way, and then it will be on, on the idle hold position. So let's see that happening now when we reach top of descent. Here we turn. We have top of descent, so let's see if she's doing that correctly. She start descent. I'm turning here the heading. Retard, as expected. And 
and at the diesel point remember we should see the speed dropping toward up so she's doing a constant descent we'll see how she managed this approach I will not help whatsoever the idea is to see what PMDG has done with the modeling so let's let's her do it arm so we are in idle that's correct see the diesel point is coming now so what you should see is the speed 230 and the bug here going down toward the up position at the diesel point so let's see what's happening now you see she's pitching up a little bit and the speed is going down perfect now we'll set the next altitude which is 3100 feet at the rp704 and now as the speed is dropping she wants us to give some flaps so i'm going to go flaps one as soon as the speed is close to up 1000 to level off all right let's go flaps one now you can see that she automatically bugged one which is good turning inbound i will set already 202 202 here we go very nicely established you can see the local the, the uh, lateral and vertical deviations are good let's go flaps five now we're reducing the speed to flaps five two miles before gear down arm um, speed brake and cabin crew take your seat for landing flaps 15 We are turning final. I need to give lower altitude. So let's go to the minimum, 500 feet. And we can go flaps 30. Perfect. So we are flaps 30. We passed now the final approach fix and the aircraft is going down. Landing checklist, landing gear. So engine start switches, continuous speed brake is on, landing gear is down. Flaps, 30 green light. Landing checklist completed. Now we can check distance DME versus the altitude. So at 7 miles, we should be at 2568. So 7 miles, perfect. Now we check the next one. 6 miles, 2250. So let's see that happening. 6 miles, 2250. We cannot yet set missed approach altitude because on this approach as you can see the missed approach altitude is 2000 feet if i set 2000 feet the aircraft will level off so that's not what we want six miles 2250 perfect next five miles we have four miles or 5.2 miles 2000 so 5.2 miles 2000 okay 5.2 miles 2000 not bad next is four miles 1614 it's quite bumpy windy today and we have the terrain so she's flying it as uh, the best she can she's fighting with the element here very nice job now when we are 300 feet or more below the missed approach altitude we can set it so let me check four miles first 1614, slightly low. We have runway in sight. Now I can set 2000 for missed approach. And as you can see, we reverted in uh, vertical speed. So always make sure you go back in VNAV path and we continue the approach. 3.6, 1500, that was good. And the next one is uh, two miles around 1000 feet per minute. And then I will take it manually and we'll do the landing. So everything looks good. We are just waiting for the two miles. We should be roughly at 1,000 feet. 
So that looks good. And I will disconnect the autopilot and I will disconnect the auto throttle. And now we are on our own, we are flying this manually. In an AirNav approach like this, you can keep the flight director if you want, even though you're flying visually. So if it disturbs you, remove it. If not, you can keep it. Myself, I keep it. If it's an AirNav approach, if it's a VOR NDB, I will remove it. So now we are going for the runway. Try to maintain your speed and anticipate the right turn to align yourself on the center line. With maximum 15 degrees bank, as we are very low, you have to be very careful. Checked, continue. Landing. So now you can see I'm starting my right turn. Easy. Checking the speed, we're on profile. And we go down for the landing. All right. Speed break up, reverse is normal. Manual braking, auto brake is disarmed. And 60 knots out of reverse. All right, we're just going to stop here on the runway. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. That was how to fly how to start the engine only on batteries. And finally, we also managed to do the uh, RNP22 left flown by this beautiful 737 by PMDG. And as you can see, she performed very, very well. So nice, I'm very impressed. Thank you for watching guys. If you have any question or comment, drop it in the section down below. And uh, as always, feel free, uh, sorry, stay safe and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys, see you next time, bye-bye.